pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Looking this morning at the reality of the resurrection. Now, opening the, uh, the service this morning was a very short video on the Apostles' Creed. In a few short weeks, I'm going to begin to uh, dissect the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed was actually um, started, if you will, written about the second century A.D. It was the way the church passed their, their doctrine, their beliefs from one to the other. They would memorize this creed, and some of the things in that creed might uh, startle you. You saw the part that I believe in the, in the Holy Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church had not been born at the time, had not been started at the time of the Apostles' Creed. Catholic means universal church. So don't get, don't get all bound up and wound up about how this would lay out. I will be sharing with you in the next few weeks uh, a layout of the Apostles' Creed. It would be a great time for us because this creed really sets a very, very strong foundation, biblical, scriptural foundation for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, probably starting that maybe two weeks from today, looking at the scheduling for that. Uh, probably a series of 12 or 13 sermons to actually take in, encapsulate that entire creed. But a beautiful work. Look it up on the internet and, and look at that and, and you're going to see some tr uh, tremendous truths uh, housed within that Apostles' Creed. The reality of the resurrection, Matthew chapter 28, verses 5 and 6. But the angel told the women, don't be afraid, because I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been resurrected, just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. I'm here to declare to you today that Christianity stands or falls on the reality of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Without the resurrection, Christianity would be no different than any other world religion. Certainly there would be differences and variations in some of the moral teachings. <coughs> Perhaps there would be differences in some of the rituals. But the resurrection is what separates Christianity from every other world religion out there. Buddha is still in the grave. Muhammad is still in the grave. Confucius is still in the grave. Joseph Smith is still in the grave. You could go down this list of, of founders of religions here in the world and you would find that what is left of them is still in the grave. Jesus Christ is the only one who came up from that grave and showed himself for many, many, many to see. As an example to all, declaring he is alive. This morning I'd like to touch on a few points that can help to answer the question, why is the reality of the re resurrection so important? Now, if we were to carry this out exhaustively, it would take weeks or even months to even begin to study and to learn the truths behind the reality of the resurrection and its importance to us. But what I want to do is I want to give you a very simple understanding today of this intrinsically vital and necessary doctrine of our faith. Remember, if Jesus be not risen from the dead, our faith is in vain. We're wasting our time here today if Jesus Christ is still in the grave. Paul shares this truth in Romans chapter 1 verse 4. He says, Jesus Christ our Lord has been declared to be the powerful Son of God. How? Yeah. By the resurrection from the dead according to the spirit of holiness. So this is our starting point here, what Paul declares to us. He has been declared, why? Because of his bodily resurrection from the dead. 
That is the truth behind it all. He is truly the Son of the living God because He is alive today. I want to look this morning a few points that helps us to understand the importance of the resurrection. Number one, the reality of the resurrection is important because it shows us that our faith is secure. We can stand on it. We can know that it is firm and secure and will stand the test of time. To be secure, we need a sure foundation. We need a foundation that has been built by God Himself. That firm foundation is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Paul said there is no other foundation that we can build than that which has already been built, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the foundation of the church. I'm not talking about the building, folks. I'm talking about every born-again believer in the world. Jesus is our foundation. He is what we build upon and what we are constructed upon. We build our lives around the truths of the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't go out there and try to put things together, or try to put their thoughts together, or try to put doctrine together. We get into the Word of God and we put the doctrines together as God has laid them out for us. We trust upon those things which God has given us to rely upon, to trust upon, to stand upon, and to know that we are secure in our faith because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. As we see in the Scripture, the resurrection proved that Jesus was indeed who He said He was. If Jesus Christ was still in that tomb today, Everything that he had said when he walked upon this earth would be worthless, be lies, be deception. We look at the teachings of Muhammad. We look at the teachings of Joseph Smith and the, and the Mormon church. We, we look at the teachings of, of the Jehovah's Witnesses. We begin to see that these were man-made ideas. These don't come out of the Holy Word of God. These came out of the mind of some guy who sat down and began to write and began to think. And, and he was somehow inspired by something to begin to call this a new religion, a new way. But Jesus said, I am the way. I am the only way, Jesus was declaring. I am the only truth and the only right, uh, the only life. And the, the proof of that is in His resurrection. Hallelujah. Without the assurance of, the, of Jesus Christ and His resurrection, you have no security today. You have no foundation. You have nothing to stand upon or to base your faith upon. You're wasting your time here today. Paul presses this truth further in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 13 and 14. He declares, if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And he says, if Christ hasn't been raised, then our proclamation is without foundation. And so is your faith. Your faith is worthless if Jesus Christ is still in the grave. If Christ is not risen from the dead, the long course of God's redemptive plan to save His people ends on a dead end street right in that tomb. Amen. If the resurrection of Christ is not a reality, then we have no assurance that Jesus is the living God or that we are even saved or even can be saved. Our faith that is built entirely upon the premise and the promise of eternal life would be futile because the very object of our faith would in no wise be validated as victorious over death himself. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, O death, where is your sting? O death, where is your sting? The, rapture, the, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ has taken the sting of death away. If Christ is still dead, we are all without hope. 
Speaking of himself, Jesus declared in John 2.19, he says, destroy this sanctuary, and he wasn't talking about the temple. That's what they took him to mean, but he was speaking about himself. He said, destroy this sanctuary, and I will raise it up in three days. See, he was already laying the foundation and the purpose that he was going to die. He came into this world to die. He came into this world knowing that he was going to give his life on the cross. That he was going to take that horrible punishment upon his own body. That he was going to suffer the wrath of God. Our wrath. The wrath that should have come upon us. He was going to take that upon his own body. And he was going to die in our place. So that we may live forevermore. Without the fulfillment of this prediction by Jesus Christ, Jesus would now be labeled a liar or worse. Paul reveals the fulfillment of this in 1 Corinthians 15, 4. He writes, Christ was buried and He was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. So the fulfillment of the promise of Jesus Christ, Paul writes about that. He declares it to be the truth. You know, C.S. Lewis once said that for someone to make the claims that Jesus has made and to not fulfill them, he would have to either be a liar like the world has never seen, a lunatic, or the devil himself. But we know Jesus is alive. And because Jesus is alive, folks, your faith is secure today. You can stand sure in your faith. Number two, the reality of the resurrection is important because it shows that his sacrifice was sufficient. To be sufficient, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ had to do what? It had to satisfy the wrath of God against the sinfulness of man. His sacrifice, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ had to satisfy the wrath of God against our sinfulness. God hates sin. Sin separates humanity from Creator God. So all of that wrath, all of that judgment for our sinfulness fell upon Jesus on that day. And on that, at that moment that that was happening, Jesus experienced something he had never experienced before. At that very moment, he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You see, that was the first time in all of eternity past that the Lord Jesus Christ had felt separation from His Father because of our sinfulness. And we think we can go into eternity and lose the presence of God for all eternity when Jesus on that cross felt such pain at that very moment far beyond the pain that He was feeling from the spikes in His hands and His feet Far more than the pain from the stripes upon his back, far more than any of this was those moments of separation from his Father above. Never had he experienced anything like that before. He paid our price so we would not have to experience that. 1 John 2.2 2 declares He Himself, speaking of Jesus, is the propitiation for our sins and not only for ours, but also for those of the whole world. <clears throat> the sacrifice of Jesus was sufficient to appease God's wrath. Jesus did for you and I and for all humanity what we could never do for ourselves. Yeah. Paul shares it in this way in Romans chapter 4, verse 23 through 25. He says, Now, it was credited to him was not written for Abraham alone, but it was written also for us. 
It will be credited to us who believe in Him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered up for our trespasses and He was raised for our justification. You see, folks, today we are justified before God through Jesus Christ. What does that mean? That means that when we stand before God, we are standing before Him just as if we never sinned. Not because of what we have done, but because of what Jesus did for us on that cross. By paying for our sinfulness on that cross, we can stand righteous before God with the righteousness of Jesus Christ clothing us, and we stand just as if we have never sinned. Folks, you and I both know we're all sinners. We're all sinners. And yet, because of Jesus Christ, we can stand before the Father above justified. What a beautiful thought. Jesus bore the legal penalty for our sin. He paid the price required with His own life and His own blood that you and I might be justified before God the Father. The resurrection is proof that the sacrifice of Jesus was sufficient to meet God's requirement. <clears throat> when He raised Jesus to new life, what God was showing us is that that promise was fulfilled. It's done. It is finished. It is over with. The price has been paid. Jesus didn't cry out, it is finished because He was dead. He cried out, it is finished because the work was complete. For you and for me and for all humanity, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ was all sufficient. Number three, the reality of the resurrection is important because it shows that our hope is sure. Our hope is sure. The reality of the resurrection is a demonstration to all that Jesus truly is who He said He was. And that because He is God, we have an eternal hope in Him. It's not, I hope I get to heaven. It is a hope that says you are assured you're going to heaven if you are in Jesus Christ. We have the assurance that the Son of God came into this world. That He died for our sins. Paul writes for us in Romans 3.24. He says, they, speaking of all people, are justified freely by His grace. Folks, you understand what that's saying? There ain't nothing I can do. I have been saved by grace, by the grace of God. God did for me and for you and for humanity what we can never do for ourselves. Why did He do it? Because He's gracious and He's merciful. Because He loves us and cares about us. He says they are justified freely by His grace. How? Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. He redeemed us. He bought us back. He purchased us back with His own blood on the cross. In dying for our sins, we are assured, we have that assurance that God's judgment has been satisfied. Through Jesus Christ, we stand assured that in the sight of God, we have been justified. Therefore, because of this, we have a sure hope today. We can know that we know that we know that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior today. And however I leave this earth, whether it's by death or by the rupture, I know exactly where I'm going because I have the eternal hope that is in Jesus Christ alone that I shall spend all eternity in heaven above. Amen. Fourthly, the reality of the resurrection is important because it shows that our future is sealed up. The reality of the resurrection offers a guarantee for all who are in Christ that their future is sealed up. It is secure in Jesus Christ. Notice how Peter shares this thought. 1 Peter 1, verse 3 through 5. Peter writes these words. He says, Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy. Notice it was His great mercy. He has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He has also given us an inheritance that is imperishable, 
uncorrupted and unfading that is kept in heaven for you. You are being protected by God's power through faith for a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Wow. Think about that. Think about what Peter has written for us there. Think about those words for us uh, of, a, of a security and assurance there. We don't have to worry. Our future is in the hands of God Almighty. Amen. And we know that God so loved the world. God so loved us that He gave so that we may have everlasting life. So in the hand of God is the most secure, safe place to be, folks. Through Jesus, all who believe in Him have been reborn, born again into this living hope that Peter is talking about. Believers receive an inheritance, an inheritance that is incorruptible, without corruption. It's undefiled and it will never fade away. It will never go away. Praise God, we're going to a place where we shall be forever and ever and ever. We will never again suffer. We will never again cry. We will never again uh, feel sadness because all of these things will be gone. The very face of sin will be gone. And we will be secure in the arms of God Almighty through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Yeah. Through the power of God, you have a future hope that is sealed and secure. John writes in John 11, 25 and 26, Jesus giving us this promise. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. You're not going to read that in the Quran, folks. You're not going to read it in the writings of Vishnu. You're not going to read it in, in the Buddha stuff. You're not going to read it in the stuff of Confucius. In fact, all of these guys died still unsure themselves. If you read their testimonies, if you read their histories and their biographies, they left this world still unsure of what eternity had. Praise God when Jesus Christ came up out of that grave and He knew what He had in store for us. He knew what was in store for us. And He said, I go to the Father and I, if I go not to the Father, what happens? There's nothing for you. But He said, I'm going to the Father to prepare a place for you. And if I prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Folks, I'm telling you, that ought to do something to you. That ought to cause you to shout inside. That ought to cause you to get excited for what Jesus has done for us. Amen. Praise His holy name. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and I am the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, he's going to live. He said, everyone who lives and believes in me will never die, ever. What a glorious promise for all who believe. Folks, in Christ, you find absolute assurance. You find hope. You find security. And you find a future that is sealed. Finally, last of all, the reality of the resurrection is important because it shows that our present is shielded. Folks, if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior today, you are in His hand today. Amen. The Bible doesn't tell us that you're not going to have face peril, that you're not going to face tribulation. In fact, it tells us, you know, that tribulation is here. Look at, look at what the apostles, the disciples went through. Look at what Paul went through. It wasn't a piece of cake to follow Jesus Christ. It wasn't a walk in the park to be a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. The world hates you, Jesus said. The world hates you, can't stand you. Why does the world hate you? Because the God of this world hates you. Why does the God of this world hate you? Because you're a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. And He hates the Lord Jesus Christ. Why doesn't the world persecute Muslims? Why don't they persecute Hindus? Why don't? Because they're not worried about them. The God of this world isn't worried about those people. Because they, they're serving a dead God. Why is it that Christians are dying by in great numbers every day around the globe? Why is it that the Chinese are burning down the Christian churches? Why is it? Because Jesus Christ is hated by the God of this world. <clears throat> when you're a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to have turmoil and tough times. But Jesus said, don't worry, I have overcome the world. Yeah. He has given us the promise that we too shall overcome. Yeah. 
Paul tells us in Ephesians 1.20, he said he demonstrated this power in the Messiah by raising him from the dead and he seated him at his right hand in the heavens above. So what does that mean for us right now? Paul gives us the answer in Romans 8.34. He tells us that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God and he's interceding. He's constantly making intercession for you and I. He's standing in the gap for us. He is our advocate. He is our attorney. When the accuser comes and, and tries to accuse us, tries to belittle us, tries to tear us down before God and tell God that we're worthless, Jesus said, remember my blood. Amen. Amen. And the Father only sees the blood of Jesus. He doesn't see all those things you're being accused of. He doesn't see all of those things. You go back to the book of Job and you see there in the book of Job where the, the, the devil goes into the presence of God and begins to accuse Job. Job came out victorious in the end. Amen. Because God was with him always. Yes. Even through the pain and the suffering that he endured. Folks, Jesus is standing in the gap for you and I before the Father today, making constant intercession for us. John writes about Jesus in this position in 1 John 2, 1. He says, if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, and it's Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Hallelujah. Praise God, we've got the greatest attorney the world has ever known. We've got Jesus Christ standing in on behalf of us, speaking yeah. on behalf of us. He is our advocate. His righteousness has placed him in the position whereby he can stand in for us when we sin so that we continue to be accepted by the Father above. The Father sees the righteousness of Jesus rather than my sinfulness. Folks, let me tell you. Let me tell you about this promise. We are shielded today because of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ shields us here and now, protects us and watches over us. We are secure in Him. And we know that as Paul said, you know, you can, you can destroy the body. But that, nothing, that, that ain't going to hurt me at all because the next moment I'm going to be in heaven. Yes. That's basically what Paul was telling us. That, you know, to die is gain. I know where I'm going. Amen. I know where I'm going. Do you know where you're going today? Hallelujah. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is important to us because it remains a vital and essential foundation upon which our faith has been constructed. Without the reservation, uh, resurrection, folks, we have no hope. We have no assurance. We have no security. We have no future. We have no present. We have nothing without Jesus Christ. Yeah. Except to be like the lost world, struggling to make it another day. reality of the resurrection is bound up in that beautiful verse, John 3, 16. For God so loved, God loved you and I so much that He gave, He stepped out and did for you and I what we could never do because of His love. He gave His only Son, the only sacrifice that was sufficient. He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him, whoever, that's all inclusive, folks. You can't say, well, I've been so bad, God could never, God could never accept me if, because of all the things in my life, all the things in my past. But Jesus said, whoever. He said to the thief hanging next to him on the cross, he said, today you'll be with me in paradise. Because that thief simply said, remember me. Remember me. What about you today? Through the resurrection we find that we can be forgiven. We can be cleansed from all unrighteousness. We can be justified before God. We can be made righteous in His sight. We can be changed and transformed into a new creation in Christ Jesus. We can have peace with God and we can inherit eternal life. These things through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Jesus is who He said He was. He did what He said He would do. And when we learn to place our faith in Him, we find ourselves justified before God because God was satisfied with what Jesus did with His own blood, His own life. Folks, let me tell you, today we are celebrating the greatest event in human history. We are celebrating the accomplishment of redemption. 
We are celebrating Jesus' victory over death, hell, and the grave. Jesus paid it all, and because He did, God sees us in His Son. Amen. We are justified. We are righteous before Him if we are in His Son. And folks, that's the resurrection reality. Hallelujah. Are you in Christ today? Amen. Would you stand with me this morning?